Well, you know what? Times are changing, buddy. Uh, okay, yeah, you, you can spend take some your... more money. Hi, I'm Jason Twaddell. And I'm Chris Carlson. And we're from Ball Floor Plan, and we're here at Van Wettering Greenhouses to bring to you a four-part series of videos on how to be a baseball fan for a team that never makes it to the World Series. No, it's a propagation video. Oh. So we're here to help you grow the best liner that you can every time you stick a cutting. It's a four-part series on how to grow a better liner. Let's get started. The ladies in the background are pinching. Obviously, we're gonna talk about pinching as it relates to your stage three liner. So at this point, we really need to take in mind what crops need to be pinched. You gotta create a list for yourself of what you need to pinch. For every grower, it's gonna be a little bit different. Some people can get away without pinches, but generally, most crops benefit from a pinch. Crops like geraniums, they don't need a pinch. But a verbena that we're looking at here really would benefit from a pinch. So there's a decision to be made here. We've got this beautifully stacked liner. There's one, two, three, four nodes here. Are you gonna to pinch to two nodes, three nodes, or four nodes? It's really, again, it's up to your, your discretion as to what your target is. Begin with the end in mind. You need to, to decide what your finished product is gonna look like, what is this liner accomplishing, and that's gonna delegate where you're gonna pinch on this cutting. Equally as important as the pinch and where you pinch, you need to decide the number of days it's gonna take for this plant to grow out of the pinch. And also how much new growth and how far do you want to grow out after the pinch before you're gonna ship that liner out or transplant it. These are all important factors of pinching. Now let's talk about sanitation as it relates to pinching. There's some really important things that we need to discuss when we talk about sanitation because a lot of diseases and viruses can be spread mechanically when you're pinching the cuttings. So you can see this container here has scissors in it and trimmers for pinching, and there's solution in here to cleanse and, and treat and sanitize the trimmers before they go on to the next tree, tray. So it's also important to have enough contact time of whatever solution you're using to sanitize your trimmers. So we finished up stage two and now we're on to stage three. We're rolling our crops out of the prop house and bringing them into our finished house. So now that we've done that, we've got to consider a couple of things. One, where are we starting in stage three and where are we going to in the end of stage three? So I've got some angelonia here and I'm pulling out. You can see this is the beginning of stage three. We finished stage two, we've got a cutting that's rooted. The roots have elongated, they're to the edge of the cell. And this is an angelonia that is at the end of stage three. What's the goal at the end of stage three? A transplantable liner that's ready to go. So remember, that's the goal. Always start with the end in mind. So what's the first aspect of stage three? First aspect is changing the environment. You saw those tables rolling in, out of the prop house, and into the finished house. That's what we want to do. We've got to get these plants into an ideal environment. What does that mean, ideal environment? Ideal environment is all about creating an active environment. We want to raise light levels, lower temperatures, decrease humidity, get more air movement. Anything that moves water through the plant so that we can get our wet dry cycles going and grow nice, compact, controlled plants. So now that we've changed our environment, it's time to bulk up our liners and build our root mass. And this is not the bulking and building that I'm talking about. We're talking about bulking and building our liners up, right? So what does that mean? We want to build our root mass in this liner and we want to bulk up the top. That's what we're talking about. So we're going to start off with building the root mass. How do we build root mass? really good wet dry cycles. We talked earlier about a uh, active environment. We, that's why we're changing the environment, bringing those liners in here so we've got a better environment we can dry down more effectively. That's really gonna build it. So you wanna have good moisture management cycles. You wanna have a level two to a level four, ideally. You're gonna alternate from level two, to level four. That'll build a really strong root mass so that when you take your liners to the transplant line, they're ready to go. Your transplanters take them, plant them in the soil, no problems. Next thing we want to talk about is bulking up the top. Start with the end in mind. Again, how big do you want that liner to be when it's time to transplant? Do you want it to be big and bushy? Do you want it to be a little bit smaller, a little more compact? No matter what you want to do, 
make sure that you start with the end in mind and you bulk that top up so you've got a transplantable liner that is up to your expectations when you're ready to go. For our final topic on stage three production, we're gonna talk about PGRs and control growth. Ideally, you can use your environment so that you can create nice compact liners and you don't have to rely on PGRs, but we all know they're a great tool in the toolbox for any grower that's propagating. Because it's such a wide topic and there's so many different ways to skin a cat when it comes to PGR, I think it's important that we save some of the details for our supplement and for our webinars. So I'm not going to go into too much detail with this right now, but overall you want to make sure you build a really good plan for your PGR programs and that way you can have a nice compact liners when you go into transplant. It's World Series time, and if your team's made it to the World Series, they've gotten stronger and they've been toned throughout the playoffs. That's what stage four is about, is toning our liners. We want to make our liners stronger. So how are we going to do that? It's a valuable time to transition our liners from the warm propagation zone to a cooler finish zone. Ideally, you have your own spot to tone your liners or harden off your liners, but many growers are going to have to go into the transplant zone. So, what's going to drive that toning process? Again, lower temperatures, higher light. And you should reference ballfloorplant.com and grower facts to get the crop specific temperatures and light conditions by crop. It's really important that you don't go too low with some crops, so you really need to reference grower facts. Now, for a small grower, this can be a challenge. So there's other options. You could use a hallway or use unused space and build small tunnels, again, to lower the temp and drive high light. So you were talking about World Series earlier. I think it's a pretty big mistake to think your team's going to make it to the World Series this year. Let's just keep to the big mistakes of Stage 3 and Stage 4. What's a big mistake of Stage 3, Jason? One of the biggest mistakes of Stage 3 is not taking your plants into a better environment. So you want to change environment when you come out of Stage 2 and into Stage 3. Another one is not providing that good moisture management. We want those dry cycles so that we can get the fertility in. So that leads to fertility. What's a big mistake of fertility? Big mistakes in fertility is not using enough, not using the right rates, not using the right type of feed. So you want a nice hard feed with more nitrate nitrogen instead of ammoniacal nitrogen. Use lower rates, 100 to 150 parts per million. And then we need to talk about controlled growth strategy. It would be a mistake to not have one. Also, you need to reference the supplement and the webinars to get that specific information by crop because it's such a wide topic. Yeah, that's right. PGRs are a big topic, so we want to. We'll go into more detail when we go into the web or to the webinars and and, and on the website. So, uh, the other thing we want to talk about is pinching. Pinching is a really important part of stage three. We want to make sure we pinch to the right number of nodes. We want to pinch at the right time so we have the right kind of plant when we go to transplant. And finally, I talked about stage four, and it would be a mistake not to tone. Lower the temp raise the light. So that concludes our How to Grow a Better Liner series of videos. We really appreciate you watching. Remember, reference the supplements, the webinar, and ballfloorplant.com. Now let's talk some more big mistakes of baseball. You know, we stole Billy Butler from you, and I'm pretty sure you can't win against us this year because of that. I don't know. I think you guys pretty much traded your entire team away. How are you going to repeat with that? That's what we always do. We're a small... Yes, I am all so that you can get the crops to specific for that. So the ladies in the back, I can't say so. See if you can hit my curveball. You bump. Come on, old man, you probably got a great Maddox arm. You're yeah. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs>